Um, I'm going to show you, uh, this is Khan Academy's new, quite awesome um, computer science module. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I use it to make a program uh, to do numerical modeling and physics. Okay, so why is why this particular uh, platform? Um, you know, the, the cool things about this, I've already written a program here and I'm going to explain to it to you how it works. But uh, one of the cool things, let me just show you, um, is that I can um, go over here and change these variables. I can click on a variable right there and this window comes up and I can actually just drag it and it changes the dynamically the position of the, the object right away. Uh, so let me put this back to 400. Uh, you can do that too for colors. Um, if I click this background color up here, this little thing pops up and you can choose whatever color you want. Um, if you have an error in your code, let me delete this thing. It, all, it gives you a, a little error message and show me where the problem is and it says I think you're missing something. Look, this is something that's always bothered me about computer programs is that if you know there should be a semicolon there, maybe you could just put it. But I got it. I got it. Okay, because you know, then it wouldn't be me. Um, and so you can share it. You can save it. Uh, their tutorials are very nice. They have a little play button down here, and you can um, pause it and interact with the code at any time. So it gives you this real output window, uh, and the code's fairly, fairly nice. It's not Python, but, you know. So let me show you how this uh, simple program works. I'm not even going to run it right now. Uh, instead, let me show you some important things about this, and I'll explain everything in here. Uh, okay, so first I drew a picture. Here's a picture I drew. So this is the, uh, one of the things, here's the window with a whole bunch of too much code on there, but. Um, so the first thing is that the origin in this display is up here in the corner, in the upper left-hand corner. So that's positive X and that's positive Y. That's not perfect, but we can deal with it. So what we're going to use here is mod I want to model the motion of a ball going up in the air um, using basic physics. Uh, so the first idea that I want to use is this right here. This definition of velocity is the change in position over change in time. So what I can do with that is say delta y is y2 minus y1. Here's y2. Here's y1. And I can get this equation right here. Pretty straightforward. y2 equals uh, the position where it was plus, and here I put v1 because I'm being tricky, uh, times the change in time. So if I have a time step in my computer of some small time step, and I know the velocity, and I know where it was, I can find out the new position. So I can say, here's where the ball was, and now here's where the ball is going to be, and I can tell the computer to draw it there. Now, if this is projectile motion, then the velocity is not going to be constant. If it were, then I, I just have some value right there. Okay, so uh, let's look at this side over here. How do I find the new velocity? If the ball is going up and I know the acceleration, uh, acceleration is defined as the change in velocity over time. And I'm not using vectors in this case just to make it, I want to make it as, as simple as possible. Oh, before I forget, this is uh, 200 pixels this way and 400 down. So it's 200 by 400. Um, but then I can use the same idea right here to solve for the final velocity. So V2, the velocity at this position, is going to be whatever it was before, V1, plus acceleration times the change in time, whatever that change in time is. And now here's the big trick in numerical modeling. Um, it's, if delta T is really small, a small time step, then I can use the velocity. I really want this is really the average velocity, which would be the average of these two numbers. But if I haven't calculated that velocity yet, then I, I can't do that. But if the time step is small, then V1 is going to be very similar to V2. And so it doesn't really matter which one I use. And this is what we're going to do in the program, is to take these small time steps, calculate a position, the new position after a small time, and the new velocity after a small time. And then start over and do it again. And do it again and again and again, and that's where the computer comes in. So here's the program. Let me explain the different parts of it. Um, this just, I don't think I actually need this first line right here, but it's there. Um, so this first variable, 
one of the things when you play with this is say, well, what does this variable do? Well, click on it and change it, and, and you can see. That's one of the nice things you can do. Um, in this case, changing the other variables won't do too much. I can change them later. Uh, so that's where it starts, 400 down here at the bottom. Uh, this is my time delta t. I'm calling it dt. And then here's my initial velocity, which is up, right? I put negative 50. That's this way. Um, and then I have here the starting time and the acceleration, which I, I just called G. I probably should call it A, but whatever. Sorry. Okay. Um, that's just so we can, the T isn't, is needed just so I can keep track of time. This is something that I, I'm pretty sure I, I calculated correct, but I might not have. But um, you can't control that I know of so far. It could be wrong. How fast it does each loop. So I've, I've calculated uh, that it's one second in here is 0 0.035 seconds in real life. So one second in real life is 28.6 con, I put con academy seconds. Okay. So... Here's the main part of the of the program. When you put this uh, draw equals function and anything in here, it just keeps on repeatedly doing. Okay. So what do I have in each? Let's just go through each line. This first part right here, background, sets the color. If you don't have that in here, and you should try moving it out, then it won't redraw the background, and so you'll keep on getting a ball each. It won't delete the old balls. Okay. Ellipse. This draws the circle right here. So this is the x position, the y position. You see I used the variable y from up here. So whatever y is, it puts right down there. And this is the uh, x and the y width. You can see you could change this. Let me change the y one. So it makes it skinny or whatever. The color of the ball, if that's important to you, is from the fill. Okay. You click this and see I have it as red. But you could change that if you want. Let's make it blue. Boom. Blue ball. Okay. I like red. Why did I change it? Okay. That's kind of pinky. See what happens when you change? Never change. Okay. Now it's still pink. Oh, I know. I can just change this to zero. It was 25500. Zero, zero. There. Okay. So this part right here, all this stuff, this just writes this text in here. Okay. So this t equals puts that t equals and then I have the actual t the variable t it prints out the time and this is the x and y coordinate of where I want those locations to be so I had to you just have to play around with these a little bit but you can see here if I click this um, you know I can I can move t back and forth and you can play with it and get it, get it the way you like it uh, for here for the y I wanted I want this to be positive y so I'll make this uh, 400 and this zero, so I just put 400 minus y. I don't know. I just like that. Okay, so here's the physics part. So here I put an if loop. You don't have to have this. You could put this without that, and it would just keep running forever. But I want this. I want to shoot the ball up, have it go up, and come back down, and stop when it gets to here. So I said as long as the y variable is less than or equal to 401. Remember, 401 is right below this little window here then do the following. First thing I do is this is just like y equals y plus v delta t. That's just like going back over here, this. Now there is one small difference. Where was I? Okay. Um, this is not an equal sign. That's an assign sign. That says make y equal to whatever value it was before plus v delta t. Okay, so it's not an equal sign. And then this is just like the uh, v2 equals v1 plus a delta t. Okay. And then I'm also doing the same thing for time. So I'm changing time. Actually, if you took this out, the program would still run. That time just wouldn't change. Okay. So let's go ahead and run the program. And then so it just keeps on doing whatever's in this thing until y gets uh, less than 401. So restart. And it, it's not real fast because I, I had to go 50. Uh, meters per second up and you can see the what it's pretty high um, and so this is the con time not real time yeah 
But that would be the time it would take a ball to go that high and come back down. So now it's coming back down. And what did I say I was going to change? Okay, there's all sorts of things you could change here. But I, I want to show you something. Okay, so it's done running. Um, I'm going to go down here and press return. Now I'm going to say, uh, what if I want to know the final velocity? Let's just, let's just put text, uh, V, and then let's put zero, zero, put it up in the corner. Oops, you can't read it. Okay, let's move this to 100, 100. Oops. I guess it didn't. V, why didn't it print it there? Let's see if I put it in here. There. Okay. So I can I can find the velocity. Here you see the velocity when it ends is about the same as what it started, except this is negative, right? Because remember everything's backwards. So you can you can write down things that you want and find things. You can actually use this to do useful stuff. And this is a very simple case, but you can use it. Okay, so I'll link to this uh, and you can play with it. And um, you know, make sure you say, okay, what happens if I change the time interval? So go over here and let's make this, uh, ooh, not that. Let's make it, let's just make it one. And let's make it point one. You have to put 0 0.1 or it gets angry. And then restart. See, cool, huh? I'm pretty excited, okay.